Someone once told me that love is when you see beauty. When I first heard this, I thought this to mean something of an aesthetics nature, in the way that you might like a car because it's flashy, or the way that you might find someone attractive because you consider them to be beautiful. But this statement, it transcends much further than that. It's words that identify what you're passionate about and recognizes that your drive and motivation for doing something is found when you can see the beauty and the inspiration that lies in the foundations of it. You will know what it is that you love when you see the beauty in it. Now, tonight, I'd like to share with you an area that I'm extremely passionate about. It's the area of development. Now, the beauty of development doesn't lie in the number of wells that you dig up or the number of roads that you lay down. Its success is not measured by the number of schools erected or the farms created. The beauty of development, it lies in the people. Its success is measured by the depth of the relationships forged, the extent of dialogue undertaken, and the strength and independence of the community throughout and the end. And we cite for who we're doing this for, it's for the people. Earlier this year, I was travelled to India to learn more about development, and I don't think I could possibly find the words to explain just how absolutely amazing and life-changing this journey was. It's one thing to learn about development in books and reading papers, but it's a whole new dimension when it comes to seeing the projects firsthand, to meeting and speaking with the people. And it was these very people that taught me some of the most important lessons when it comes to development, who showed me the beauty that existed and highlighted for me the strength of leadership and empowerment, the importance of education, and the power of communication. So throughout my trip, I saw many... Throughout my journey, I saw many development projects, and throughout, it was the projects were led by incredibly strong people. But what was amazing to see that many of the projects I saw were led by women. The empowerment of women is incredibly important. It's been said that if you truly want to help a community and identify the problems that exist, Find the poorest of the poor men within that, within that village and then speak to his wife. <laughs> so what's great, what's great about a woman in a leadership role is that she has the ability to speak with the women in the community and understand their perspective and identify the issues that are existing. Now, I met some absolutely amazing women on my journey. So on the left, we have Parvati, who works on a preservation project in Pajani Kulam Forest. Then there's Minnie who works with an organisation called Development Support Team, and lastly, Mother, who with women from her community formed the group Ixnora Green Kamal, a group focused on tackling the problem of waste in their area. Now, when you listen to these women, you can't help but feel inspired and privileged to have met them. You see not only their determination and strength, but also the love they have for their country, their community, and their people. Now, with great leaders like this, the community also benefits as the people become inspired, inspired and empowered. Now, um, what's, we've all heard the saying, you know, give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach a man to fish, feed him for a lifetime. In these projects, it was local members of the community that were getting involved. So an example of this is Ixnora Green Kamal. They, they employ members from their local community and give them the title of Green Ambassadors to clean, make sure that the area is clean. Now, empowerment isn't just about giving people dignity and pride in their role. It's also about providing opportunities for all. And this is never more evident than in a technician we met. So this technician works for Ixnora Green Kamal. And what is amazing is that this man is actually both illiterate and handicapped, but he still does the absolute best technician they have. Um, throughout the, many of the projects, what we saw were women's self-help groups. So self-help groups are usually groups of women who come together every month or so, put money in some key, until they have enough to sell and leave. Now they lend this money either to their members or the community, with repayments and with interest being paid back into that key. So these women, they're essentially helping themselves. They're no longer dependent on money lenders, and by coming together as a group, they've all become empowered and independent. And that is such a beautiful thing to see. Now we all know the strength of education. Education plays an incredibly big role in development. Um, education and sharing information and knowledge brings about awareness, understanding, and equality. Providing skills and training leads to employment and empowerment. But what absolutely surprised me was just how much I learned from these community members 
and also from the children from some of the schools we visited. So during our trip to Pachandakula Forest, we visited the Nantikbom High School. Now the school has a strong focus on learning about the community as well as the natural flora and fauna of the area. Now every year, the children from this forest school, they meet with children from the coastal school and they share information about the area. Another great thing is that it's amazing to know how much the children know about their local area. They're easily, they can easily identify the temples, the homes, the schools within the area on the map. And they know a lot about the plants, how to grow them, and as well as their medicinal properties. Now I reflect back on myself and how we live here. How many of us can say we really know our community? How many of us can identify the indigenous plants growing in our area, let alone the medicinal properties of them? Sometimes when we go to these communities, we fall into this trap where we feel that the sharing of information is a one-way transaction, that we're here to help them, we're here to teach them, but this isn't true at all. Development is a journey that we go on together, that it's, a journey, it's about sharing knowledge and information. These communities, they live life very different to us and have a lot to teach us about living sustainably and living simply with nature. We have a lot to learn from them too. Now this woman is an incredible, incredible woman because she taught me one of the most valuable lessons when it comes to communication. So we had travelled high up into the mountains and visited a tiny remote rural village in the Namaz region that borders the city of Mumbai. And we were there to meet with a group of women, tribal women, who come together to set up a self-help group within their community. Now when we usually visit communities, we take a translator with us. What usually happens is the, the feeling is usually a bit formal and you're uncertain. We as outsiders don't speak the language and the translator acts as a bridge between us. The women are shy and haven't seen many foreigners, so they're always very curious. And we're a bit shy ourselves. But in this one particular meeting, this woman changed, completely changed the whole dynamic and the atmosphere of it. So we had landed on the topic of traditional medicine. And this woman, she ran back to her home and brought back to us some berries communicating not to the translator but to us directly. She said that these berries, you eat them and they're great for stomach aches and headaches. Pointing to a tree across the field, she said that her role was to climb that tree and collect those berries. We actually as a group rushed across through the field and watched as she slung up her sari and began to climb. Now loving all the attention, she actually started dancing up on one of the branches of the tree. Um, she continued her story by saying that, you know, sometimes she would fall, putting her back in her neck pointing to a man beside her, who we think is her husband. She said that, you know, I fall down, but he doesn't care. He never cares. What was beautiful was that this woman had broken down the rigidness of the meeting and given us as visitors a valuable, rich insight into her daily life. <clears throat> but what was absolutely magical about this woman telling us this story was that she did not utter a single word when she told it. Because, you see, this woman was deaf and could not speak but she used her body and expressions to transcend the God's languages and words to tell us her story. She brought us all closer together. Language can act as a barrier between people. We're always told how important communication is, but this woman highlighted a whole new dimension when it comes to communication. That communication is more than words. It's about us as humans relating to each other. And this was one of the most powerful lessons I learned that we can talk to each other without words, that we as humans, we all share the same emotions and feelings, and that we are all naturally wired to understand them. So, the beauty of development, it lies in the people and communities that you work with. Forget about the people and you lose the very heart and pulse of what you're doing. And always remember that they have as much to teach you as you have to teach them. Because development is a journey that we go on together. So remember that the beauty of development is the people. Thank you.